So here we are, round number eight for the day, and we see that we have two different Runix Sprite variants, but Niklas actually managed to fit in one of your favorite engines of the whole game. It is, yeah. it is a bigger Trickster engine. We have seen Trickster engines in Sprite versions before. Yes. However, true. this one contains not only Light Stage and Lilybell, but also Kandina and Reincarnation. Indeed and it does. I want to count Drone Lockbird in as well. That's actually true, because the combination of the Drone Lockbird and the Reincarnation was very, very popular back in the day. It hasn't seen a whole lot of play lately, but it's back here in the featured match area in the hands of Niklas. Oh, Impermanence discarded. By the Hagen, and it's met by Impermanence of Finn. So this is not going to search for the Runic Fountain. Which, interestingly enough, in that version of the deck, I think Niklas is only playing one fountain. So that's definitely something to, to have an eye on. So if that one fountain actually gets outed, it's unlikely to recover recover back into the game. And he's going for Gigantic right here, right now. Yeah, I must say, I'm a little bit surprised about the uh, Trickster engine as well, because it's kind of conflicting, you know? Light Stage and Runic Fountain. Yeah, but those are two field spell cards. And exactly. of course, wow. there's only one field spell zone, but there is another and impermanence. And Valor on blue before that. Triple hand trap, Imp, Imp, and Valor. And now Light Stage is being activated, so we can actually kind of extend here. You can search for the Lily Bell. You could search for Kandina, but you cannot summon Kandina anymore because of the restriction of Gigantic or... But the Gigantic okay. didn't resolve at all. That was impermanence. Oh, right. The whole effect was Absolutely. negated, so he totally can summon yeah, Kandina and he here, and that is, is a card he's search searching. For it. <laughs> I didn't expect him to, in the first game, even summon this card, but because, as you said, he's focusing on the sprite yeah. part of the deck, so this card should not be summoned that often, but it is summoned here and is resolving as well. So now he has two options, either search for the one of Reincarnation, which is a valuable resource in the GY, and can also take a away a runic fountain from the hand of your opponent as soon as it's searched. Or yeah. you go for the Lily Bell and have another monster on board and possibly do some more comboish stuff. True, and you can still go into Elf here because it only yeah. needs one level 2 or rank 2 monster. And let's not discount one thing here. It's cool to have triple interruption on your opponent's turn on your opponent's turn with double imperm and a veiler. But that also brings you down to only two cards in yeah. hand, three for the next turn. So this is definitely something to keep an eye on. Finn does not have a whole lot of resources here. Yeah, and Niklas, by the way, the third player called Niklas in our stream today. Niklas has Sprite Blue in the GY. So, of course, it was stopped in the last turn with the Effect Veiler. But it can be summoned back with Elf. Cannot be targeted then if yeah. it's summoned in the Elf zone. That's and then really you good. are in your engine with a search jet. That light stage was really great for Niklas Vers. So we see actually that the Trickster engine in this particular game one right here might be the reason why Niklas is winning here. So we were wondering whether that Trickster engine is actually giving the little bit extra to the Runic Sprite deck. And here in the direct comparison, it might actually be the key component for Niklas to win this. Oh, DD Crow on the Sprite Blue as well. And now I'm curious, he is chaining Elf. He might have Lockbird in hand. That would mean after the draw, he can resolve Reincarnation and chain Lockbird. And this would take apart the entire hand of Finn. However, this does not seem to be happening. Nope, definitely not. And there is the very, very popular Iperia that has been played in basically every Runic Sprite yeah. deck we've seen so far. And there the, there's the best quick play spell you could imagine from the Runic deck. It is Runic Tip right there. What are we searching for here? Runic Tip into, into Field Spell maybe? Are we going for Runic Fountain? I or do we, oh we, yeah, we, we will end up getting the Runic Fountain through the Hugget there, I think. But I mean, you're probably just going to reincarnation this as soon as it's searched, right? I don't know how experienced Finn is in playing versus Tricksters, but this reincarnation could actually counter the entire strategy. How many fountains does he play? That's a good question. I will look up. Looked like one. Only Finn, one. Finn is also only on Runic Fountain in one copy. Only one copy for both oh, of the this players. This could be devastating. And he doesn't even activate the effect as it seems. He just goes into Gigantic Sprite. Makes sense. He shouldn't really have too many cards in hand. Ooh. Yeah. But there is thought. instantly freezing, the freezing curses. curses. And oh, the oh, fountain is he even banished. So there's no fountain left in the deck of Finn. And we know this Runic Sprite deck is totally 
evolving around that field spell and it makes you recycle all of your other runic cards and therefore the whole recycle potential and the reason why this deck is so strong is now gone with that one banish. I find it really interesting that you decide to run only one fountain if you are expecting a lot of mirror matches. That's true, because that banishing aspect of all the runic cards definitely hurts there. Yeah, there will be games where you just can't really play with your engine. Absolutely true. So it looks like it is back to Niklas right there, because he drew for a card. And no, I, I don't think so. I think... Uh, oh, no, wait, it was... Yeah, 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 he's actually activating the effect of Sprite Elf. Yeah. And he... Oh, he wants to summon back the Gigantic. Wait, can Gigantic just detach something from anywhere in the field? Yeah, so you absolutely. could actually detach from opponent's monsters? Oh no, from anyone else. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. on your side of the field. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but he did have another Sprite Blue in hand. That's why he didn't want to special summon the Sprite Blue back. So well, the Sprite Blue was banished with Crow in the previous turn. Oh yeah, yeah, also. True, true, true. So it was the only target he could only have. So, Niklas looking quite good here. Also, the comeback potential from Finn is severely hindered by banishing that runic fountain there. Yeah, and this looks like the board is... I mean, it's already broken because it is just a gigantic sprite. And that one's not too huge, so... <laughs> not really, not really. So, Finn also not looking too happy. We talked about it. In his turn one, he already used three cards out of his hand on the opponent's turn already and therefore was not left with a lot of resources. Those cards in his hand actually were quite good. He had the um, tip, he also had um, access to his sprite engine, but still, nevertheless, Niklas had interruptions for that and he also managed to banish the Runic Fountain, which could be, could be really, really a huge turning point in this. So Niklas now being able to resolve the gigantic sprite there, detaching the sprite blue, and what are you going for here? Interestingly enough, he actually decided to not run the Iperia. He only runs one copy of Capshaw and no copies of Iperia. I mean, if you decide to only run one of these cards because you want to cut these drawing engine cards for Trickster, it makes sense to only run Capshell because you can Why is special that both, yeah? summon on okay. your turn. Like, if you're comboing it out, I mm -hmm. think Capshell gives you more draws overall. Because it can give you a draw on yeah, your own turn on an yeah, turn. You can summon it back with Elf after your first turn and then you can go into a Gin Buster, which Iperia can't do because it's not a dark type. I that's true, that's true. But I mean, you can... I mean, you want to summon back something else with Sprite Elf on your opponent's turn, because theoretically you could also yeah, summon sure. back the Hyperia, then you get a draw sure. on your opponent's turn. But there's better stuff to reborn, yeah. so you don't really want to waste it on that, and that's just the worst case scenario, you would have to do it. But that is looking good. He also has Sprite Carrot now on the board. It's interesting to see that Sprite... Smashes. Yeah, that Sprite Carrot, though, is getting more and more popular, because it was always yeah. um, Sprite Red, the monster effect negator, being the more popular of the two. And now this format shapes up to be a lot of runic, and therefore the Sprite Carrot, all of a sudden, is actually the better card of the two, or like the more used, the card you will blindly go for more of the time. So this is definitely the one that has more impact on the meta game right now, I would say. I like the hair of Sprite Carrot, if you can call it hair. I like the li lightning hair. Yeah, the thunder hair. I don't know. Okay, and so... And there is the Sprite Smashers. He wants to get rid of the Gigantic, of course. Um, also getting rid of the own Gigantic Gastel. and not trying to activate any more Runic cards this turn, so he doesn't have to skip his next battle phase. Iperia is normal summon. And, and he gets a one draw. Them? It's a one draw. Can you... The, if he draws into blue or... Jet, then this could actually be quite the turn. I mean, Jet would not be that great because there's still yeah. carrot to negate the spell and trap you would search, but blue could be quite good. It is, it jet, is jet, though. It is Jet. It is still good. I mean, it gives you another level two monster on the board, so you can actually intent extend into yeah. your extra deck, so it's definitely fine. And uh, you can somehow play around the Sprite Carrot, maybe even, if he summons a monster to run over it now. But that would need to be a pretty big monster, to be fair. And we should not forget the last card that is set for Niklas, which is Trickster Reincarnation. Still. Oh, wow, true. He hasn't even used it at all. That's true. He hasn't even used it at all. He hasn't so. been able to pull off the Droll and Lockbird Reincarnation combo at also. But I think, I mean, in this Trickster builds, it was always like a little bit of a rule to play Droll and Lockbird in your main deck as well, even though from yeah. time to time it would not even be that great in the format. But when we have a look at this format right now, seeing so much Sprite Runic, it's fantastic. it actually seems like a pretty good fit, yeah. So 
I think he's happy to actually main deck draw on Lockbird in that, that big of a field with so, so many Sprite Runic players. Yeah, and also your opponent can really not play around draw on Lockbird plus Reincarnation. It's basically impossible. His opponent was kind of lucky that Niklas did not have the Lockbird because otherwise this game would have been over in a sec. Certainly, yeah, most certainly. And now it's on Finn. He's considering his options. He added a spell, but he knows that that spell could instantly be negated by the Sprite carried on the field. So I think maybe we see a Zeus line here. Okay, he goes Gigantic, first of all. Yeah, and he cannot activate it. I think he tried to activate it, but the first Gigantic Sprite was removed from the field already after trying to activate, and thus you cannot activate this new Gigantic Sprite. And this might have been a little bit of a misstep there yeah. from Finn. He forgot about it because it totally didn't resolve the effect of the Gigantic yeah. Sprite, but Niklas was clever oh. and actually chained the yeah. smashes to the effect activation of Gigantic Sprite and therefore oh. no effect could be used. Reincarnation was anymore. just activated maybe in the end phase of the turn because he probably just wants to revive the Kandina on his turn. Yeah, probably he wants to have more monsters on board. Oh no, we're, oh, no, we're actually in the main phase. Okay, right? that's kind of interesting. Definitely interesting. Because I don't really see the reason for it. Yeah, I mean, the, the sprite starter in hand was totally fine, wasn't it? Yeah, because it was you actually had a way to deal okay. with it. So. And you can also chain it to the reincarnation. Indeed, you can, yeah. Oh, and he drew into the freezing curses there. So this is going to summon another Huggin, but what is Huggin supposed to search? You cannot get the fountain. I mean, it, it can't search anyways, because you would have to discard one card, and I don't think he has any oh, more there cards is to discard. One. He discarded two. He discarded oh, you're right. Oh, true, true, Starter true. and Effect Vela. However, I mean, the bottom card of the Banished Pile is Runic Fountain. Yeah, and I mean, this I gives him access to um, Sprite Elf again, if he true. wants to. But whether that's going to change the outcome here dramatically is questionable, I would say. Yeah. Oh, Red is being summoned as well. Mm. So we actually have this is a board. Yeah, but this is looking better than I thought for Finn now. It looked really good for Nicholas, and I was already thinking that he was in a really, really winning spot there. But Finn is fighting back quite good here for actually starting with only three cards in hand and got a lot of interruptions on that three cards even. So it is actually quite interesting and quite impressive even yeah. how Finn is coming back here. However, Finn loses his next battle phase. Maybe that is it was indeed true. This one, actually. I don't think he attacked this turn. He did run over the Sprite Elf, actually. Oh, right. Right, that's why it's not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, the, oh, there's this another is such light a huge stage. draw, because now he can actually use the engine to summon Lilybell and add back the Kandina. He has no targets to search for Kandina, except for another light stage, which really doesn't do anything. <laughs> but it's still cool. <laughs> yeah, I think you were about to say it's so good, it's so great, but yeah, it's really just licorice. cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's if he really had a licorice, just cool. it would be crazy. Liquors would be the icing on the cake, but he didn't have space for that anymore. So it's just Lily Bell, Light Stage, and Candina, and also the one reincarnation in the graveyard. So you don't even really want to get the Candina out of the graveyard right now, because in the graveyard you could at least reborn it with the reincarnation. Yeah. So I don't even know whether you want to use the add back I mean, effect of Lily Bell there. You can go into Link Place and then reincarnation out the Lily Bell in the battle phase to add back the Candina after that. True, that's actually right, yeah. So, we see that Finn wants to summon back the Sprite Jet with his Sprite Elf, and he successfully do, does so once again, and he searches for another Sprite Starter. So, he has follow-up for the next turn, but that Sprite Carrot is still looking chill on the side of Niklas, and is still ready to negate every spell and trap that Finn is about to activate. So, now we are seeing... Gigantic Sprite hasn't been used yet, right? Nope, not this turn. That Sprite Carrot and Lily Bell came there for other reasons. Yeah. But he's not he using it. Decides not to use it at all. Does he have any Link 3 or higher monsters? Let me see, day? let me see. We have Nightmare Unicorn in there. So maybe he wants to go for Unicorn. But I mean, nothing on there seems to be like something that you definitely have to shuffle back to the extra deck, honestly. So I see Unicorn and Link-wise, there's nothing else really. Maybe you want to make a Gigantic Sprite, which is... 3,200, and that's why you went for the dark there. But I'm not really sure whether that's so important right now, because all the monsters that Finn provided aren't that big either. So yeah. Looks like it's a little bit unnecessary, but he's moving the Sprite Carrot to the attack position now, which makes it even more vulnerable, because now you can run over it even easier. We're yeah, running no, over the Sprite Red, run we're over running the over the... And it can't, it can't be run over. 
because the next battle phase is going to be skipped. Oh, you're right. True, true. I forgot about that. But then he's actually summoning the Kandina, so that's why he didn't use the Gigantic to just go into Kandina and run over the Elf, which kind of makes sense. I would just wish that Lilibel would have gotten back the Kandina. Yeah, I mean, and now you can just go into IP maybe in main phase two, and then that's actually another interruption on the opponent's turn. But do you? Yeah. does he have cards in hand? That's a really important question, because the only thing he can really summon out is the Nightmare Unicorn, and Nightmare Unicorn without a card in hand is not that great, honestly. I mean, did he even play anything out this turn? Did okay, he now he will get cards? two cards in hand for yeah. sure. He is securing some cards in hand here, and I'm pretty sure we're also going to see the IP Masquerina going to be on that end board here for this turn. And Finn is just drawing to one card. He has no battle phase to actually get any monsters off the board with attacking, so it's going to be a hard time for Finn here. But we see that this matchup, the Sprite yeah. Runic Mirror Match in general, is so grindy. It's so much about resource management. It reminds me so much of other older formats we had, and this is really such a great game, and you really are playing this game in your mind, and it's, it's not punch, 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 it's just really, really thinking everything out for a while, and it actually takes a while to happen there. And nobody in this game activated Runic Fountain so far. That's true, I mean, that's the most impressive card of the archetype, or, or like the engine, and wasn't even activated yet. Pretty interesting. So does he now go into the Gin Buster? He already grabbed Sprite Blue and Sprite Jet. It looked like he would go into it, but he's not sure yet. I really like that he keeps Candina on board, maybe because for each spell or trap that is activated, there will be 400 burn damage. Okay, we don't use it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> well, as I said, there is the IP Masquerina, and there's also Sprite Red now, so there's a lot of cards that Finn draws here which are not going to yeah, be. And I think there are no anything. cards in hand yeah. for Finn. Right now, there's none, so he's top decking into one, and it's going to be quite hard for sure. I mean, it can't be a monster card, and it can't. Oh, there is one card in hand. Oh, there still is. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, true. Oh. It is still the starter. He searched for, for starter with the Sprite Jet he reborn in the opponent's turn. But there's only Maru now banishing the Gigantic Sprite. Okay. That is kind of surprising to me because the Gigantic Sprite did not have any material, so it would not have been the biggest threat. And it's coming and back in the end phase, yeah, right? And he's giving away a red for it. Also, this red is now not on the GY because he didn't detach it, but he detached blue instead, so you can't reborn it with the elf. Honestly, by doing that, he actually gave oh, his opponent a, a lot more, re yeah. mo it more possibilities. So there was a lot more possibilities, but with two cards in hand versus this board without a battle phase, Finn says, nope, no way I am winning this. So let's go into game two before we waste any more further time. And yeah. Niklas takes the first game with the Trickstar engine. Yeah, you must be a happy man right now I because am. your Trickstar deck is actually performing still in 2022 yet YCS Utrecht. It's only a couple of Trickstar cards, but more than you would expect, yeah. honestly, from that Two engine. Two more, actually. Indeed, the Candina and the Reincarnation. And uh, we did not we did actually see both cards, and honestly, those made a difference there in that game. But Candina was an extra thing to attack with. That uh, Reincarnation, like, that banishing effect Candina was kind of random, right? We didn't really understand yeah. why he would banish the Sprite starter there. But anyways, it was there in the graveyard then to special summon back the Candina, which was cool. Uh, but yeah. I think in the first turn, it was especially important that he had the light stage to extend after the interruptions yeah. of the, his opponent. That was really, yeah. really good. And you need to have Candina so you can get the reincarnation there. Yeah. I think it's a really great card in this matchup especially because you can target basically the runic fountain as soon as your opponent searches it, which is basically the start of the combo. Certainly, certainly, yeah. You can just get rid of it forever if your opponent only plays one. And this come to... This might be a problem for Finn. Definitely. And I mean, the Trickster deck, since its introduction, since its release, uh, it was always a deck that would not struggle a lot against hand interactions. It would not be interfered a lot by Nibiru or something, because it really is just a very, very simple deck, to be honest. It's just searching, special summoning. The light stage is cool, but it's back row as well. Yeah. But it's not doing something crazy or anything. But it's so consistent in what it does. It's so great. It's also, of course, having that cool little burn aspect the, you were just talking about. The most important part about it is being annoying. <laughs> and there, there, there is a crazy thing it can do. I mean, For it's not sure. spectacular, which is the reincarnation draw interaction. True it's, true, it's no spectacular combo. But it knocks your opponent out quite quickly. For sure, for sure. You can definitely not disregard that. Uh, I will just have a quick look into the side deck of Nicholas. He will be probably forced to go second here, so 
he's one of the many players in this event, which is also side decking Cosmic Cyclone. And in yeah. this matchup, as we saw, drawing only one of it would actually be really great because there's only one runic fountain in his opponent's stack. So yeah. that could really come in clutch. He managed to snipe out that with the banish effects of his own runic cards in this first game. And that managed to hold down his opponent really low on the resources. So he was never really in trouble of uh, getting uh, of getting to lose that resource game, honestly. There were barely any draw draws except for the Iperia ones. Indeed, indeed, yeah. And also we see that he's on the Dimension Shifter package. Do you think this is going to come in here, going second? I don't think so. I mean, he is playing a Runic Sprite variant and his opponent is playing a Runic Sprite variant. So if he thinks that he can handle yeah. having Shifter activated, then his opponent won't be stopped too hard. Probably. By it. But then, I think the only real card he could side in is maybe evenly matched. Probably or evenly the matched. Pankratops as well. Okay, the one Pankratops, of course, let's not yeah. disregard them, uh, him. He got a lot, pop a lot more popular recently yeah. again, right? Since the introduction of Sprite, this card basically is a staple again in every side deck. Before that, people were not even really playing it anymore. But yeah. now everybody is like, okay, the first card in my side deck probably is going to be the Pankratops and therefore people are really, really uh, going with it again. And uh, yeah, let's see whether Niklas also went with it here for his preparations in Game 2, because this Game 2 is going to happen now. Let's get back into it. All right, there we are, yes. Niklas having the comfortable Number of one next to his name, meaning that he's up 1-0 in this he doesn't round. See it, <laughs> That's but true. He knows. In that round eight featured match, they took up almost half of the time for this uh, game one right there, but still plenty of time to play. And Finn is having a close look at his hand, and he's thinking about the perfect route to go here. Which in this deck, honestly, can be hard to come up with because it's so versatile. There's so many different routes. So you definitely want to take a moment to actually consider all the options beforehand. And we are here starting it off with one of the runic quick spells to summon out the Hagen. Hagen discards red and red then searches us for, uh, not red, but Hagen searches for fountain. Yeah, fountain is probably going to be activated quite soon and it already looks like it's going to get a lot of draws. Hyperia is normal summoned. So right. normal summons out here. We're going to fish for some probably sprite cards or more quick spells. And I mean, you can access the sprite cards already if you want, but uh, oh, it would be better to just draw a jet. There's sprite jet indeed. And it's cool for me that such a simple card, such as Iperia, now gets so popular yeah. again because <laughs> this card is just whenever they summoned, draw one card and it's super popular. Basically, every runic sprite player is on it. Not Niklas, as we saw, but he had yeah. to fit in the Trickster entrance as well, so he's a little bit of an exception anyways. But uh, this card being so simple, still so impactful in this meta game right now. I mean, cards that just draw stuff are genuinely good. Certainly they are, yeah. However, for most of the combo decks, they want to, in the past, rely on cards that directly search combo pieces out or mill the combo pieces out. Yeah. But this is more of a controlish game. True, yeah, of true. course, I mean, you don't want to OTK your opponent, so you take every extra draw you can get. Yeah. And let's be honest, this it's also interesting to see the evolution of the Sprite deck, because Iperia yeah. is not a card that was newly released. This card was around no, for a absolutely. while, and now all of a sudden everybody is on it. In the beginning, nobody was even considering it. And then at some point, I think at the end of the last format, some people were already starting to play it. But now with Sprite Runic being so popular, everybody is actually playing this card. I mean, with Swap Frog, you most of the time had a better card to summon out with the Gigantic. Yep, you're right. But now it's Iperia all day long. And I think people are quite happy with it, to be honest. Oh, we have Red and Carrot. The and the Runic Fountain now as well. Do we have a way to instantly trigger it as well? Doesn't look like it. Nope. We will not get the draw in our own turn already. Or is he just holding back on it? No, he gives over the deck to his opponent. Looks like Finn is done with his turn. Not drawing any cards of a Runic Fountain. Maybe he has one card to activate on his opponent's turn. And then he will be able to draw more cards with it. Maybe this set card is a impermanence, and now Trickster Light Stage is being activated. So his opponent might consider this card a threat, might yep. value the set card a lot. 
and he could negate it with carrot. However, this would mean that the second light stage in the hand of Niklas would be really, really strong. Yeah, but did you see the facial expression of Finn? I think he gave it a little bit away there because he was really making a grimace. He, he really didn't like it when he He's put it down. He's using smashers oh, on it. Wow. Immediately, this is so big, getting rid of the gigantic and he's not gonna like what's coming next. Niklas is just, okay, let's maybe... Let's okay. get another oh, draw. Okay, okay, he gets another draw for Hyperia. We were talking about that earlier, this is not like the perfect card you want to reborn with Elf, but you will take it if you can do it. And there is another light stage. I think Finn really, really hardly wanted to draw into Runic Quick Play spell there because he wants to get his Runic Fountain to work, but we're we didn't see whether he did yeah. draw into one there. There Let's is another light stage now, though. That would mean two more draws and yep. possibly more runic spells. Indeed, indeed. We are searching for the Lily Bell, and we know why he's going for Lily Bell there. He has Candina already in hand, so therefore <laughs> it wouldn't be any other card he could search there even. And he uses the effect of Lily Bell in hand to special summon it instantly out when it's being added to the hand. And that resolves properly there. So Candina is being normal summoned. He had the full package in hand, right? Two light stages and one Candina already. So he's now going to, of course, add the reincarnation. However, Finn's Runic Fountain is already on the field. I think actually Candina and reincarnation are good side out cards if you're going second. Not that I'm thinking of it. Feels like it, honestly, yeah. I, I will definitely agree. But. I mean, so far, they did a pretty good job, right? They drew out the one Smashers, and also they already provided you a level 2 plus another monster on board. And there's still wow. less monsters on his side of the field, so there's space for Pankratops as well. So Niklas slams down the Pankratops you were mentioning earlier. So this is looking good, and Finn doesn't like it. Look, his facial expression doesn't get better there. You can probably get rid of this Runic Fountain if there is not an immediate answer in Finn's hand, because he can just attack over the red. Elf was already used this turn, so he can just pop the fountain. Absolutely. Look, it seems like he's in battle phase already. He wanted to move his Pankratops, I think, into the direction of one of the cards that's on Finn's side of the field. But Finn thinks about something. Maybe he does have a runic quick play spell in his hand because he's really, really considering something here. So honestly, that probably is the only thing he could have there, right? Yeah, I think he could have... Yes, he does have a runic quick play spell in his hand. It's flashing fire. It indeed is the flashing fire. And this is the monster pop, in case you did not know. So Pankratops will be chained. Of course, but there is now the Sprite Rat. There so it was really important that he had the runic flashing fire there, or like basically any runic quick play spell. But honestly, this may even be the best one, because you now instantly get rid of the Pankratops, which is quite cool. Yep, exactly. So is Red going to be chained? No. The runic fountain? Oh, just but but on the screen. other hand, now we cannot even draw with the Runic Fountain, so yeah. maybe that wasn't even that great. Maybe he should have probably should have red. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, he denied himself of the draws with Runic Fountain there that because have been a good he draw didn't too. negate, yeah. And now his Runic Fountain is out of the game. And Niklas has the Runic, runic Tip, tip as, well. as well, so he gets in his yeah. Runic Engine now as well. Oh my! This battle phase was really important. He thinks he can skip the next one. <laughs> Yep, and Finn is thinking about it, but giving the thumbs up. And there is the runic, I think it's runic slumber. Yeah, runic slumber being banished Honestly, on I, Finn's side. I just the love these artworks of the runic cards. Yep, they are fantastic, I will agree. They are absolutely fantastic. And Niklas now going after the sprite carrot with the next Runic Quick Play spell card he just searched out via the activation of Runic Tip. The Flashing Fire has to be negated, right? Because, oh no, there is no Runic Fountain on the field. I thought that this was going to be a big draw, but... Uh, Not yet, no. But he does still yeah. negate it, so Flashing Fire gets negated and Red finds its way into the graveyard. So Finn is going lower and lower and lower on resources here. And Nicola's still sitting there pretty with his Trickstar monsters. Yeah. And Sprite oh Blue and Hand get oh special summoned next to the Trickstar Lilybell. There are so many resources for him. He has the Reincarnation in hand as the last card, I think. Yep, and indeed. And now he can just Sprite it away. Oh yes, oh yes. And funnily enough, the Trickstar engine really both games was the part that 
stuck to his board, really. Like, he yeah. had the Candina on board all the time, he had the Trickstar Light Stage on board all the time, and he really was winning because he had those Trickstar cards. I mean, it was really important that he had Lily Bell there, because without a level 2 monster, he would have had no way to special summon out Beast Bright Blue. So really, the Trickstar engine being here, the part that decides this feature match right there. So Cap Shell is being summoned. This is what I'm saying, you can play it over Iperia because now you can go into Elf with it, draw a card and then summon it back with the Elf. Well, actually there's another level 2 missing, so uh, you can't go for a next draw. Oh, and it's an immediate scoop. Finn does not want to drag this out anymore, any longer. There was still a chance for him to get back, I think, but uh, Finn decided this is not worth it. I'm not going to drag this out any longer and I surrender to you Niklas. Niklas Fabian Fry being the winner of this featured match still being in competition here at YCS Utrecht late in day one. He definitely made a bold call by adding that Trickster engine Tricksters. to his deck. Just such an old engine and I feel like we're, we're just seeing old engines being reinvented today. It's like one deck after the other having a cool old deck being featured. And I mean, he threw in some very new cards as well, but the mixture of you both... Can say so, yeah. The mixture of both actually works insanely yeah. well, as you just saw. I gotta be honest, I did not expect the Trickster engine to be this no. good. As I said, both games, actually, Hon this was the part that was sticking onto the field. Honestly, in this mirror match, 1,800 attack points this is a lot. Indeed Candina it is. was always able to run over Elf. And honestly, this reminds me of the original Trickstar mirror match because Trickstar also had really, really hard struggles to out any big monster. Yeah, I remember losing games to normal summit Garnet. Well, like this, it definitely is supposed to happen in that matchup because there are just no big monsters at all. And uh, therefore, Trickstar Crowbane actually was quite an important card yeah. being introduced to the deck because it was giving you an option to deal with such monsters. This is, of course, not a card you would consider playing in such a small Trickstar package, uh, but it well, definitely has some similarities. Crowbane can also be special summed if you have no monster on the side of the field. So we could see a comeback for this card if maybe a rank 5 toolbox two deck is and I mean, getting popular. This is only working together with the Trickstar Lily Bell, but yeah. there is Sprite Pixies. So there is like a similar card to Trickstar Corobane, but actually Niklas Fabian Frey is on Pixies. So there is that honest ask effect he is playing. Yeah. So yeah. this is quite cool. He's having a lot of cool, cool gimmicks there in his deck. We have seen a lot of Pixies recently. First of first when the deck came out, people weren't really considering Pixel Not because they thought, okay, you know what, Honest has been a great card, it has had its formats, yeah. but not anymore, we don't need cards like this anymore, and now people realize, okay, attack points matter in Yu-Gi-Oh! a Certainly. lot right now. Especially in the sprite deck where you only have monsters with low attack points, so you are really having yeah. no other options to basically deal with. It can become really annoying to big monsters. try to beat over big monsters, yeah. and there is a Kid Colors on the field, and you just can't run over it. Exactly. So I think in the beginning, only the pure sprite variant was really, really playing Pixies because the pure variant was really struggling with that a lot, and like all the other decks with the other engines they were adding were having different, different, different uh, options to actually take care of big monsters. For example, like the runic action in the runic engine actually is providing you with stuff. So you would have yeah. thought, yeah, okay, in the in the pure sprite deck we would need pixies and maybe in the runic variant we don't really need it. But looks like you even in the runic variant you would play pixies as we just saw here. This is kind of fascinating to me because this deck literally skips your battle phase. Yes, true. You shouldn't be in the battle phase that often. <laughs> so maybe this Pixies is more of a defensive play. You don't really use the Pixies that often to yeah. attack over monsters, but to have it as a protection effect, because we have seen that Sprite Elf has become really vulnerable in these matchups. Absolutely. Sprite Elf has been run over a lot, and if you can just summon out a blue with Elf before and add the Pixies, then your opponent won't be able to out your Elf, and Elf can sure. be such an important card to have on the field when you are going into your own turn. I think, personally, it was a good decision to run Pixies in this tournament, because you probably anticipated but you're going to play a lot of mirror matches. And in yeah. the mirror match, in the sprite mirror match, Pixie is, is actually great. Yeah. And therefore, you made a good prediction. You really anticipated this deck being maybe the best deck 
maybe the most popular yeah. deck in the room, and uh, it is looking like that a little bit. I'm really curious. I really want to see top cut numbers tomorrow. Yeah. But it's absolutely. still going. It's we still have to take some steps until then. We are yeah. now there done are with a round lot of number rounds. eight, and uh, I think our interviewer is ready as well. We want to hear about the trickster sprite runic deck of Niklas Fabian Frey. So, Ed, please ask all the questions to him. I am indeed joined by the winner of round eight, the penultimate round of today's festivities. First off, Nicholas, congratulations. How does it feel? How many wins have you got now and how many losses? Uh, I'm currently at six wins and two losses. That's pretty good though, this far in. How are you feeling? Because we're quite late in the day. There's still another round to play. It's a bit late. Uh, I don't feel too bad. Um, I think the rounds are pr going pretty well for me. So uh, yeah, I'm feeling fine. Well, fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about your deck because Part of the reason that you were featured on here is you have a very interesting choice of deck, the Trickstar engine and stuff. So talk us through the thought process. Why was this the deck you chose to build? So um, I played uh, Sprite Runic uh, with the Evil Twin engine the last uh, regionals. Um, but uh, I thought that the Evil Twin engine was too, uh, too not too bricky, but uh, I, I, it, it took too, met, uh, too much extra deck space. And uh, I wanted to play some other cards. Plus, um, the Trickster engine, I think, is, I think it's really good because uh, many people don't expect uh, Reincarnation to just banish their hand. And I think Droll is pretty, pretty good right now because a lot of people are playing uh, either Sprite or Runic or even against Tyr, it's, uh, it's uh, with the new Scarecrow variant, it's pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, cheese some wins with uh, the, the good old Droll Reincarnation. Um, and I think the Light Stage is especially good because you don't commit your normal summon. And it's like an immediate, uh, an immediate uh, threat that the opponent has to answer because uh, most decks like uh, sprite sets, uh, smashes, um, the the uh, Tillaments, which is uh, like one of my hate matchups, is uh, uh, they set the the Salik, so uh, you force force the back row even super poly. And um, if you have multiples, because it's not once per turn, you can force multiple back rows and just play like through boards, and you don't commit your normal summon and get the uh, the free extender with the Lily Bell to get off with the engine. Uh, and if you have the Candina to normal and uh, get the reincarnation, it's just so good follow-up with uh, the reincarnation. It's like a, it's not as good as Ronin Toten, but you can bring, uh, bring back Lily Bell or bring back Link material for IP and and so on and so on. So uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to play it. And it's a very compact engine. Uh, I'm playing only like three uh, field spells: one Candina, one Lily Bell, one Trap. That's enough, I think. I hope you're all taking notes because that was a very detailed breakdown of exactly why this deck works. So I imagine during this tournament, because quite a lot of people are playing Runic Sprite at yeah. the moment, so have you had many mirror matchups yet? Uh, I had two mirror matches. Uh, actually, the last one before this was a mirror match and was a super grindy, intense game. Um, and I joined the mirror match a lot. Um, yeah, apart from this, uh, a lot of Tillamans. So yeah, Tillamans, Sprite, the main, two main decks. What were the two losses that you had against? Uh, the loss was the last round uh, against uh, the mirror match, uh, Runic Sprite. Yeah, I got uh, Lava Golem and Rasphir moded in one game uh, twice, so <laughs> that was a bit rough. And the other loss was to uh, one of the Tillament Danger, uh, not, not Danger, the Hand variants, uh, where I just lost the die roll and uh, yeah, I, my, my both uh, the starting hands, they weren't optimal to play like through, bo through a board or to establish a board, so a little bit unfortunate, but it's part of the game. It is part of the game, but you won this game. You won this round, so at the end of the day, you've done great. Hopefully in those other mirror matchups, those little trick star things you put in are going to be the thing that separates you from the herd. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. I guess we'll see what happens. Congratulations again. Good luck in the next round, the final round of today. I hope you're not going to be too tired. You're going to be switched on with that deck brain, but it's going to be great. Make sure you guys stick around because we've got the last round of today coming right up. And then tomorrow is going to be a whole other day, including our top cut. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.